Welcome to another Secret Technology Quick Tip. My name is Steve Ruffin. We appreciate all of the great feedback we've had on our website and on our page here. And we anticipate you know, that you'll continue to enjoy a lot more of the videos that we have in store for you. Today we're going to bend a square piece of tubing. This recently came up during a class that I conducted a few weeks ago. So I'm going to just create a straight line on here to put our uh, tube piece on. Let's go in here to our weldment, pick a structural member. Uh, let's pick some 4x4 four four tubing and place it on here. Now this is a critical uh, location here, and this will make a little more sense later, but if you know the distance between these two, you can leave it at the center, but for our purposes today, we're going to place it down here at the bottom. And this will be a little more clear to you as you see what we do with the flex command here in just a moment. So we're going to tell it OK, and now we've got a 4 the 8 pin inch piece of uh, structural steel here. I'm just going to hide that. I'm going to start a sketch here on the side so that we can cut our bird's mouth in here. Now let's get our hidden line view here. Let's go towards one end here. We want to cut to the inside edge there and not that. Even the best of us make mistakes. Now let's go in here and make these perpendicular to each other and equal in size. Let's throw a dimension on here of 0.125 because that's going to be our bend length. In many cases you might want that to be 0.25 but just want to show you that uh, you know that's going to be adjustable. Right, I'm placing a point at my center point here so that I can dimension this pretty quickly. I want my bend here to be uh, let's just say 18 inches. Just use the SOLIDWORKS regular cut. You notice my arrow is cutting in the right direction here. And notice I didn't have to close off that geometry and a lot of the other packages like Inventor you have to do that. Just saves you a lot of time when you do these kinds of things here. So this will give you an idea of what our geometry looks like here. If I pick on this face, it's kind of highlighted pretty well for you. All right, next we need to bend this piece. <clears throat> now how do we bend this? Well, we have to use the thing called the flex tool. The flex tool is found under features and flex. And it wants to know the piece that we want to, to flex here. And let's put in a 90 degree bend here. And it's going the wrong way, but I'm going to put a negative 90 in here. So see what's happening here is these pieces here, or these trim planes, determine the scope of that 90 degree bend, okay? Now, how do we get that fixed? Well, Here's the deal. This first trim plane one, we happen to know just because we can see with our human eye that it's longer than this one. This one needs to be um, 30 inches um, minus a sixteenth because we left, left an eighth of an inch there, right? And uh, this one on the other side here needs to be 17.9375 right now it's kind of hard to tell what's going on here because this piece is in our way a little bit but you can see here it's left quite a gap in here now the reason it's left that gap is because SOLIDWORKS has defaulted here on this X location to be up off of the zero so remember where we had our line drawn earlier it was drawn on this plane we need to move our uh, X location here back down to zero now what that will do is it closes everything up and it leaves the gap, the 0.125 or pretty close to it, a gap that we wanted to maintain. So let's tell it OK. And voila, we've got it kind of where we want it. If you look here and do a distance here, we're actually at 0.0912, which I guess is, is uh, approximately half that distance. You can kind of tweak it to see uh, what you need to do to make it a little better. Um, here you can see we have we could probably pull back that distance uh, in here. So I maybe, uh, maybe should go back another 
16th or 32nd back that way in order to get my eighth of an inch in here. So now one of the weird things that happens to you when you use the flex command is if we go look at the front command, can you imagine you're going to go make a drawing of this and now you're not very happy, are you? So we need to take this part and move it to something that makes sense. Here's our front plane right now. Uh, this is where our top plane is going through the center. Probably not the best way to have done that, but here's our right plane. So let's make our right plane uh, match up with this. We'll just use another feature. We're going to use move or copy a body. Now, in this case, I have uh, my constraints toolbar up here, but many times the default is just to have the translate. But come down here and pick constraints. We can pick this body to move. And we're going to pick this face and I don't remember which one it was. We can pick either this one or this one. Let's pick that one. We'll tell it to add a coincident constraint there and tell it OK. And now the cool thing is, is if we look at the front, we're getting the front like we'd like it. Getting the right side view. In this case, the top view isn't it's a, probably isn't exactly what I wanted to be called top, but you get the idea. And here's our bottom side view. Now, if we need to come back in and change the size of the structural member for whatever reason, let's go back in here and edit it. The important thing to remember is where you picked your geometry here. So let's turn around and get to our start point here. So you can see that that's, we want to move it to the bottom here. If you do need to do it to the center for whatever reason, and sometimes you do, you could come in here and just find out what this distance differential is here and that would be what your x value would be in this case here you can see it would be x you might have yours twisted so it'll be either your y or your z distance all right so let's go in here and just change the tube size here let's change it to something bigger um, say six by six now notice that this distance you know that it's no longer attached to that mid of the bottom there so we have to relocate our profile but let's relocate to the bottom there and tell it okay and SOLIDWORKS fixes it just right back up like you wanted it to. And everything works really well because we had really good design intent. We used the, the open cut method. Um, it works really, really well. So I hope this has helped you out. And again, we appreciate all the great feedback from everyone on our videos. You can always reach us at www.secanttech.com. That's S-E-C-A-N-T-T-E-C-H. Goodbye.